Okay, so <clears throat> let us continue with the discussion of the monodromy theorem. So, what we have is uh, so here is a monodromy theorem. theorem. So, the situation is like this you are given uh, uh, two points z0 and z1, and you are given a path gamma uh, and you are given a function uh, so this path gamma is uh, uh, defined on closed interval a b and takes values in uh, it traces out this geometric path okay it is given by this function on the defined on the closed interval a b in r and uh, uh, you are given a function uh, f a which uh, which is analytic at this point okay uh, this point by the way is gamma of a the initial point and you can continue it analytically along this path to uh, a function f b uh, analytic at this point and z 1 is gamma of b okay and this analytic continuation along gamma is given by <coughs> uh, is given by uh, even analytic continuations uh, so you know uh, the analytic continuations are given by uh, specifying uh, a family of uh, a one parameter family of power series so you have ft of z is equal to uh, sigma n equal to 0 to infinity a n of t z minus gamma t to the power of n defined in the disk of convergence of this power series which is given by mod z minus gamma of t is less than r of t. Uh, uh, so, I will put a subscript r sub f uh, t okay. Uh, r sub f t of t is uh, the radius of convergence uh, of this power series f t okay uh, and of course we always assume uh, all the radii of convergence are positive because they are all analytic functions when t equal to a you get f a the analytic function f a which is which is analytic at this point and when t is equal to f uh, b you get f b which is an analytic function at this point. So, f b is an indirect analytic continuation of f a along this path okay and suppose you are given another path like this which is uh, say neta and suppose along this path also you have an analytic continuation of f a okay uh, and uh, so I again start with f a which is the same as uh, 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 g a okay. So, g t is another analytic continuation uh, uh, it is another analytic continuation on another path the other path is what what is common between the other path and the first path is that both of them have the same starting point and ending point okay. So, uh, z0 is also neta of a and uh, z1 is also neta of b. So, you have another path neta defined on a b uh, with values in c okay and uh, uh, with the same starting point and the same ending point. And I again start for this for the analytic continuation along this path I am given an analytic continuation along this path of the same function f a, but it is now given by uh, 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 another one parameter family of power series which uh, which I denote by g sub t. So, this is sigma 
n equal to 0 to infinity uh, uh, b n of t into z minus neta of t to the power of n and this is uh, this power series has disc of convergence z minus neta of t is less than radius of convergence of g t uh, uh, as a function of t. So you are given <coughs> given two analytic continuations like this okay and the question is I started with f a equal to g a at the end I am getting f b if I go al if I analytically continue along this path and if I analytically continue along this path I am getting g b the question is are these two equal the question is are these two equal and the monodromy theorem says that it is they are equal under certain conditions. So what are the conditions the conditions are first of all that uh, this path gamma uh, should be continuously deformable uh, uh, to uh, this path eta okay so you should continuously be able to deform the path gamma to the path eta okay which in the language of topology or the language of homotopy is got is is said as follows we say that gamma is fixed end point homotopic to eta okay uh, that is gamma and eta have the same end points and you can continuously deform gamma to eta okay so uh, that's a condition and the other condition is of course that along any of these intermediate paths uh, through which you are deforming there is no obstruction to analytic continuation of f a okay so so here so let me write it down uh, uh, if uh, uh, if gamma is homotopic uh, that is continuously deformable deformable to neta <coughs> and if there is no obstruction to analytic continuation of f a along any intermediate path uh, gamma s uh, then uh, f b is the same as g b this is the monotromy theorem so so an intermediate path is something here okay it is something it is one of those paths that occur in the continuous family of paths which start at gamma and end at meta okay. So <coughs> this is the monotromy theorem okay uh, so the important thing the, the, the crucial thing is of course that uh, along uh, you you are you, you at, the, at the starting point you have an analytic continuation at the ending <coughs> at the starting uh, at the starting path you have an analytic continuation at the ending path you also you have an analytic continuation and in the intermediate along each of the intermediate paths also you have analytic continuations okay analytic continuation should exist the function the, the function f a should be analytically continuable in any along any intermediate path okay we express that by saying that there is no obstruction to analytic continuation of this function along any intermediate path okay in, in other words give me any intermediate path the function f a can be analytically continued along that path you make that hypothesis and then the monodromy theorem says that uh, uh, the final function that you get when you when you end when you go to the end point you are going to get the same function okay this is the monodromy theorem. Uh, now so you know uh, so how does so, so let me let me uh, uh, let me expand a little bit more on the statement uh, I, I have to tell you what I mean uh, by gamma is homotopic to eta and there is no uh, obstruction to analytic continuation of f a along uh, any intermediate path. So this is uh, this is a definition this involves a definition of homotopy which you might have seen in a course in algebraic topology but nevertheless it is very easy to understand. So you see the idea is like this so what is happening is that you know uh, you have 
uh, you have this uh, on the on R2 okay you have uh, you have the axis and you have this interval uh, uh, well it need not be positive real line it could be some AB and you could have uh, some CD. Uh, so, AB is a closed interval uh, on the real line where uh, where the paths all the paths are defined okay and uh, CD is a, is a parameter is the uh, is a parameter S. So, you know this is the parameter T this is the parameter S okay. So, what you get is you get a you get a you get a square like this I mean or rather a rectangle like this uh, you will get something like this. So, the x coordinates vary from x equal to a to x equal to b uh, which I am calling as t. So, the t coordinates vary from t equal to a to t equal to b and the uh, the y coordinates which in this case uh, is I am labeling by the variable s the s coordinates vary from c to d okay. And what is happening is that you have you have a f is a continuous function from this into the complex plane okay and what is this f doing it is doing the following thing you see. Uh, uh, you know when when s is equal to c uh, and t varies from a to b all right you are you are, you are getting the path gamma sub c which is the same as gamma okay so you start with so 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 the diagram is like this so you have gamma sub c which is gamma it starts at uh, z0 ends at z1 okay and then uh, and you know as you as 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 t moves along this line the uh, the path that is traced is gamma which is gamma sub c okay and then if you take any value of s in between okay any value of s of the of the y coordinate in between then what you get is an intermediate path gamma sub s okay which is what i wrote there and when s becomes d s equal to d and t varies from a to b you get the path gamma sub d which is neta. So, you get this path this is gamma sub d which is the path neta okay. So, this uh, so this function f is a continuous function it is a continuous function it is a continuous function of 2 variables 2 real variables. So, we write uh, f is uh, as f of s comma t okay and uh, uh, we write gamma s to be the path uh, f of s uh, gamma s of t we call gamma s of t to be f of s uh, comma t for fixed s is also a path which starts at z0 and ends at z1 okay and the uh, so what you what is what you are seeing is you know see try to imagine it like this uh, if you have a square here uh, or if you have a rectangle like this if you take a continuous image of this rectangle uh, on the complex plane you will get something like this you should you should expect to get something like this with you know uh, if I take a continuous image of this on the complex plane I should uh, I should get these these four ends should correspond to these four uh, ends of a distorted rectangle all right and 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 the image of this line segment will be uh, uh, this path the image of that line segment will be that path the image of this line segment will be a path like this and the image of this line segment will be a path because the images of all these line segments are going to be continuous images of an interval. So, they are going to be paths. So, you are going to get something like this, but then you know if I put the condition that uh, at the point t equal to a all the uh, all these uh, each of the uh, each of the paths gamma s they all start at the same point. So, then it will uh, it will amount to actually you know collapsing all this into a point okay and at the point t equal to b if I insist that all the points end at the same point all this will get collapsed. So, you know all this gets collapsed to uh, z0 and all these all these points on this arc uh, on this path they all collapse to z1 and then you know if, if you collapse it this is the resulting diagram this is what is happening and this is this is an intermediate path the intermediate path is here okay. So, if you collapse this diagram this is what you will get okay and that is the, and we say that capital F is a fixed end point homotopy from 
gamma equal to gamma c to gamma neta equal to gamma d okay this is what uh, this is what I mean by saying that gamma is homotopic that is continuously deformable to neta okay. So this is this explains this statement in a very precise uh, way alright. So that is that is one thing and the second thing is I should tell you that there is no so the second hypothesis is that there is no obstruction to analytic continuation of FA along any intermediate path. So you know I know that FA can be analytically continued to uh, along along the path gamma which is gamma c and I know uh, that F A can also be analytically continued along the path neta which is gamma sub d but I need also that F A can be analytically continued along any intermediate path gamma sub s okay I need that condition that is part that is part of the uh, hypothesis and then the monodromy theorem says that uh, in fact for any along any of these intermediate paths you continue F A the final function you are going to get will have to be the same so it has to be F B which is what it was for the first path okay that is what the monodromy theorem says alright. Now, uh, now the point is uh, 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 let us uh, uh, let us postpone the proof of this theorem but let us try to see how uh, why it is important and why it is useful. So uh, you know so I have told you that uh, given uh, so, so applications one of the application is the following see suppose you are given a uh, u comma f which consists of a pair uh, 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 f and analytic function on the domain u suppose you are given a given a pair like this we have defined two types of uh, domains connected with uh, uh, this we can define two we have defined and we can def uh, we have done that earlier there are two types of domains that you can define with respect to u comma f one domain is called the domain of maximal analyticity it is called the domain of maximal analytic continuation of f okay. So uh, uh, there is the domain uh, p comma g of maximal uh, p 1 comma g 1 of maximal analytic uh, maximal direct analytic extension uh, continuation or extension or extension of u comma f that is that is this is the domain of maximal analyticity I mean so in, in other words what this means is that v1 is the largest open set in the complex plane uh, which is a this is the largest domain in the complex plane. Uh, which contains u okay which will contain u and to which uh, f extends to an uh, 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 a single analytic function on all of v1 and I am calling that as g1 okay. So uh, let me recall that is uh, v1 in C is the largest domain v1 containing uh, u such that uh, v v1 comma f1 is a direct analytic extension extension or continuation of u comma f which means which is just trying to say that you know if you take g1 and restrict it to u you get f okay. So this is the largest uh, uh, this is the domain of uh, maximal analytic continuation okay this is the largest domain to which you can continue an analytic function okay. So uh, you know uh, we have seen uh, we have seen examples I just recall uh, if you take uh, uh, f of z uh, to be 1 plus z plus z squared plus so on geometric series and u to be the domain uh, mod z less than 1 unit disc then uh, 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 then we have seen that uh, v1 comma g1 is simply uh, is simply the pair that consists of the whole complex plane minus the point 1 and the function is 1 by 1 minus z. This is the the domain of analytic maximum analytic continuation is the complex plane punctured at z equal to 1 
and the corresponding analytic function is 1 by 1 minus a okay. And of course, uh, this analytic function cannot be continued to z equal to 1 because uh, at z equal to 1 it has a uh, it is a it has a singularity it has a simple pole it cannot it is not a removable singularity you cannot continue it okay. Uh, if because if you continue it if you if you can continue it, it means that uh, that singularity is removable at at least locally okay that is not possible because it is a pole pole is not a removable singularity. Uh, so, so this is what happens and then uh, second example is that of the zeta function zeta of z is equal to sigma uh, n equal to 1 to infinity uh, 1 by n power z. So, this is defined to be sigma n equal to 1 to infinity uh, 1 by 1 by uh, e power uh, z ln n and this is the Riemann zeta function and you know the domain on which uh, 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 so here I am taking f to be uh, f to be zeta and I am taking u to be the right half plane uh, to the right of the vertical line uh, uh, real part of z is equal to 1 okay. So, this is set of all z uh, in, in, in the complex plane such that real part of z is greater than 1. So, this is the zeta function and we, we all know that it represents an analytic function in this, uh, in this uh, right half plane we have proved that earlier and then I told you that it was it is a theorem it is a theorem it is not trivial it is a theorem that in this case uh, v1 uh, is actually again like the geometric case of geometric series the domain of maximal analytic continuation is just the complex plane punctured at the point 1 that means this zeta function extends to the whole complex plane except at the point 1 and what happens uh, and of course the extended function uh, is called g1. So, g1 g1 is equal to extension or it is called the extended zeta function it is called the extended Riemann zeta function uh, which is just an extension of this function you extend it from the right half plane to the whole complex plane but the only point you cannot extend it to is the point z equal to 1 where uh, z equal to 1 it cannot be extended because z equal to 1 will be a simple pole. So, uh, z1 z equal to 1 is a simple pole pole for g1. So, this is something that we will uh, prove later on in the course okay and this is a non trivial example and then uh, there is of course uh, there are of course uh, 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 there is of course another important example you take f of z to be the principal logarithm of z principal branch and in this case you take the uh, uh, the open set to be the slit uh, plane. So, this is just complex plane minus you remove the you remove the negative real axis including the origin okay. Then you know the principal branch of the logarithm is analytic here all right and in this case what happens is that uh, the uh, if you take the maximum uh, if you can if you take the domain of maximal uh, uh, direct analytic continuation it will simply be the same in this case uh, uh, v1 will be equal to u and g1 uh, will be simply equal to f. So, in this case uh, 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 you, you, you you simply cannot directly analytically continue it across the uh, across the slit which you have made uh, by deleting the negative real axis okay. So, this is the this is the situation with respect to so the, these are three examples the situation with respect to uh, 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 the domain of maximal analytic continuation okay the, do, the, the, the domain of maximal direct analytic continuation or this is called the domain of maximal analyticity of the function okay. Then, then what we have defined is we have defined another thing we given a function analytic function we also define another domain that domain is called the domain of uh, uh, regularity it is called the domain of indirect analytic continuation okay. So, uh, we also have the domain uh, 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 v 2 comma g 2 of indirect analytic continuation analytic continuation of uh, u comma f ok we also called the domain also called the domain of regularity 
of regularity of u comma f you also have this now what is what is this domain see this is the domain which consists of all those points to which the original function can be indirectly analytically continued along a path okay so uh, so how what is the definition uh, v2 comma g2 is so v2 uh, so whenever i say domain uh, i'm also uh, when i say domain but i include both the domain and the analytic function you must always remember that so uh, uh, that's why uh, a pair like this is called a function element which namely it consists of a domain and an analytic function defined on the domain a holomorphic function defined on the domain it's called a it's the pair is called as a function element okay so uh, so what is the domain of regularity v1 is the set of all z belonging to c such that there exists an indirect analytic continuation continuation of f uh, from a path uh, uh, f all along a path uh, starting at the at a point of uh, 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 u to z okay so so the diagram is something like this you have uh, so you have this is my complex plane and here is my domain u and here is my analytic function f with values in c and what am i doing uh, uh, i'm 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 collecting all those points z with the property that uh, you know the whenever uh, there is a, so there is a point z0 in the domain and there is a path there is a path gamma starting at uh, this point z0 in the domain u and such that along this path you can analytic con analytically continue indirectly analytically continue f to get a new function new analytic function at the point z and you put together all these points okay you put together all such z's okay so you see you put you put together all these points and the result is uh, the result will be an open connected set because the point is you know if you can if you can uh, after all you know if you can analytically continue it along this point then you know uh, uh, i am getting an analytic function at that point so it's analytic in a small disk surrounding that point so for every other point in that small disk i can i can extend th that analytic function itself extends along a smaller uh, radial path okay so if i can extend from z0 to z uh, analytically indirectly analytically uh, f okay then i can do so for every point in its small disk surrounding z okay uh, and mind you an analytic function on a domain is of course analytically extendable along any path trivially on that domain so the moment i say that i can extend analytically f to obtain an, a new analytic function here at this point it means that it is analytic in a small uh, disk surrounding that point and it means that along uh, for every point in that disk it is analytically continuable for a path starting from the center of the disk to any other point so uh, so the moral of the story is the set of all such z is open okay and it is by definition path connected okay therefore it's a domain so this v1 is a domain by definition okay and what is happening is what is happening is uh, uh, you're getting a you're getting a new you're getting a new set but the only problem is that in this case uh, uh, at various z you will get various analytic functions okay you started out with an analytic function f on a domain u but then uh, uh, if you go to different points you don't know whether the final functions that you get uh, whether they are indirect analytic continuations or whether they are direct analytic continuations you do not know okay and so the the so the fact is that uh, 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 so you know you you can look at these three examples uh, uh, with respect to uh, example 1 uh, you see that uh, 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 if you take the domain of indirect analytic continuation uh, uh, that is the domain of regularity of uh, of, of uh, u comma f you will still get the same domain because you cannot continue it to the point z equal to 1 because that is a simple point that is the only point that is left out the same thing will happen uh, to example 2 okay so in both examples 1 and 2 
the domain of uh, direct analytic continuation the domain maximal domain of analyticity is the same as the domain of regularity for 1 and 2 because the only uh, point that is left out is uh, the point z equal to 1 but at z equal to 1 you cannot even indirectly analytically continue the function because of the fact that uh, uh, any indirect analytic continuation will amount to a direct analytic continuation because every point allow every point every a uh, whole uh, any deleted neighborhood about 1 is already the function is already analytic there ok. So, any indirect analytic continuation will amount to actually a direct analytic continuation and you cannot have a direct analytically con analytic continuation you cannot continue these two functions directly uh, to the point z equal to 1 because z equal to 1 is a pole ok. So, uh, in example 1 and example 2 uh, 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 domain uh, so you have domain of uh, domain of maximal analytic continuation continuation is the same as the domain of uh, regularity that is of uh, maximal indirect analytic continuation so this is what happens in the in these two examples but something striking happens in this case so in this case what happens is that the domain of uh, maximal direct analytic continuation uh, uh, so of course here i should say maximal direct analytic continuation will be strictly smaller than the domain domain of uh, maximal indirect analytic continuation so in 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 example 3 namely if you take the fundamental branch of the logarithm what will happen is that uh, uh, the domain of uh, maximal uh, direct analytic continuation will be of course uh, uh, the slit plane which is a complex plane minus the negative real axis along with the origin removed and this will be properly contained in what is going to be the domain of maximal indirect analytic continuation it will be just the punctured plane ok. So, the whole negative real axis uh, except the point 0 the whole negative real axis will also come in. So, it will be this is properly contained in C minus 0 punctured plane which will be the uh, domain of maximal indirect analytic continuation. So, this is properly uh, so this this properly contains this ok. So, in other words the if you take the principal branch of the logarithm what is happening is that uh, you know uh, 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 it is analytic to make it analytic I have to throw out the negative real axis and the origin ok. But if I want to analytically continue it indirectly along paths I can always analytically continue it across uh, any point on the negative real axis so long as the path does not go through the origin ok and therefore the domain of maximal regularity ok the domain of regularity the, the domain of maximal indirect analytic continuation will also include the whole negative real axis ok and it therefore it will be just uh, c minus 0 of course 0 can never be uh, remedied because at, at the point 0 a logarithm is not def defined logarithm is not defined for the point 0 ok. So, uh, so you see there is a big difference so you know all these examples the, so there, there are two definitions there is one definition of uh, maximal direct analytic continuation there is another definition of maximal indirect analytic continuation which is regularity and the question is how are these two related and we have seen that this could be bigger than that ok. Now, uh, so what the monotremy theorem says the monotremy theorem says the following thing. Uh, so, you can ask the question when are these two when can you say these two are equal ok. So, the monotremy theorem uh, in another version ok which is actually uh, equivalent to this version says that suppose your uh, domain of maximal indirect analytic continuation is simply connected ok. Suppose your domain of maximal indirect analytic continuation is simply connected then it is the same as the domain of maximal direct analytic continuation ok. So, that is a reformulation of the uh, of the monotremy theorem. So, the monotremy theorem says that if you start with a function 
element namely a pair consisting of a domain and a holomorphic function on the domain analytic function on the domain then and if the domain of regularity of that element of that function namely the domain of maximal indirect analytic continuation of that function if that is simply connected then that has to coincide with the domain of maximal direct analytic continuation in other words both these domains will be equal and on the domain of uh, maximal indirect analytic continuation the domain of maximal indirect analytic continuation will actually become a domain of uh, maximal direct analytic continuation which means that the function will extend to a uh, single valued function on the whole domain of regularity okay whereas you know you do not expect it in this case for example log cannot you cannot extend log to a single valued analytic function on the on the puncture disk you cannot get a single valued analytic function of the logarithm on the on the punctured disk okay so that is a if you want that is a basic exercise it is a simple exercise in the first course in complex analysis right you can never find a uh, single valued analytic branch of the logarithm on the punctured disk okay so uh, 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 so the moral of the story is that uh, in this case the domain of regularity is bigger than the domain of uh, 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 maximal direct analytic continuation and the problem is that this domain of regularity is a punctured plane it is not simply connected okay so the problem is that you are not able to get a single valued function you are not able to get a uh, single direct analytic continuation of the function to this domain of regularity uh, the reason is that this domain of regularity has a is not simply connected it has a it has a hole okay and what the monetary theorem says is that whenever you have a domain of regularity which is simply connected such a thing cannot happen okay so so let me uh, so you know let me so let me state that uh, uh, that version of the theorem let me keep this as it is so and let me state that version of the theorem and try to tell uh, convince you why uh, the monodromy theorem implies that so this is a very important question that the monodromy theorem answers it says that whenever uh, you are in a situation where you can uh, you know that the domain of regularity is uh, uh, simply connected then you can for sure say that that domain of uh, regularity is the same as the domain of, domain of direct analytic continuation okay that is what the monotromy theorem says. So, here is monotromy theorem theorem version 2. So, you know uh, I, I therefore, uh, let me call this as version 1. this is monotomy theorem version 1 this is monotomy theorem version 2. So, what does it says it says uh, uh, given uh, a function element u comma f which means that is a holomorphic or analytic uh, function f on the domain u okay if the domain of regularity of uh, f namely the domain of maximal indirect analytic continuation continuation of f uh, v1 is simply connected then the then it is equal then v1 uh, so v2 is what i have used for uh, so let me use v2 so uh, so let me read this for a moment given a function element u comma f namely a holomorphic or analytic function f on the domain u if the domain of regularity of f namely the domain of maximal indirect analytic continuation of f v 
which is which we call v2 is simply connected then uh, then v1 is equal to v2 that is the uh, uh, the domain of maximal analytic extension maximal direct analytic extension extension is the same v2 v1 is the same as as the domain of regularity. In other words what we are saying is that uh, 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 wherever you can analytically extend f indirectly no matter uh, uh, your extension may be indirect analytic extension you are only going to get a direct analytic extension. So what it says is every uh, indirect analytic extension of f has to be a direct analytic extension ok. So, it is also saying that is every indirect analytic extension of f is direct that is what it says ok. You this is the conclusion you can uh, you can get you can come to if you assume the domain of regularity is simply connected okay uh.